talk, baby. Real talk, and it's a happy 4th of July. Hopefully, you guys are having a good day with your families, barbecuing the whole nine yards, rats in a Real motorcycle. Talk, a happy well, that is a freaking feedback, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, sad state of affairs, rats in a motorcycle club. Everybody's heard about it that has watched our show it seems nowadays there's a lot more of them when it comes to MC's life in general. Because let's <laughs> let's be honest. In today's society, it's all right to do this. The government encourages people to rat on each other, to inform on each other. My problem with this is that people who get into situations knowing there's a possibility that they can get locked up or something else can happen. They decide to take the easy way out instead of being a man. There ain't many men left in this world. Many men have their balls inside a woman's purse nowadays. And when they snap their fingers, they say, yes, honey, what's up? What can I do for you? That ain't a man. A man stands on his two feet, has his balls, and he has his word. Something that a lot of people don't have nowadays. And that contributes to a lot of people that think it's all right to rat on somebody. It is not all right because it's not honorable. I don't care what the hell anybody says about it. Oh, you know, you got a wife and a kid uh, to worry about. You had to do what you had to do. No, that's BS. Because you shouldn't have been involved in the first place if you can't take the consequences of your actions. Why the hell should you lay something else on somebody else so they to do the time for what you want to do. Never made sense to me. So you're going to do this, grab the reputation, walk around with the chest puffed out and stuff, and then the next thing you know, it comes down and you want to run turncoat with a freaking yellow streak down your back. For anybody who thinks that's a man, that's out of line. And I know I've been doing a lot of history stuff. And one thing that you'll notice with the history, yeah, there's some of that, but not as much as today. And I do blame it on the current culture in America, where you're encouraged to do this kind of crap. One thing I thank God for every day is I got to learn from people that had honor that believed no matter what happens, keep your mouth shut. Don't open it for anybody. And that even includes within the organization because there's all kinds of different type of writing. There's a lot of people that do it just so they can get a position within an organization. True stuff. And it ruins clubs. It ruins the street crews. It ruins a lot because people like running their mouth. They don't know how to mind their own business. Because everybody's trying to get ahead of everybody else. And they're snakes. That's why I always say on the streets, you only got yourself to depend on if you're into something. Because I can guarantee you, bet you, that somebody's going to pop off at the mouth when they're freaking brought into the interrogation room. How many times have I shown video clips of members of certain clubs going in there and just talking? It's like they don't know how to shut up. It's very easy. It's an easy concept. My name, your birth date, and I want a lawyer. Three things. You're in there for less than a freaking minute. It used to be if you went into some there, somewhere like a, a cop office or even in the system, if you were in there more than five minutes, it's guaranteed that you're freaking yapping your mouth. 
So how do you stop this kind of stuff? Well, technology, it's totally different now. And for those that say snitches end up in ditches or whatever that kind of crap, you know what? Enough. Enough. There's only certain people that have the freaking cojones to carry through with that kind of stuff. The rest is all internet people. The rest is all dreaming. And I've been kind of disappointed with how the YouTube is, how you get these different creators out there talking this kumbaya bullshit. What the hell, man? Does anybody see reality here? I always say, go, you want to join an MC? Get your ass out of a chair and go meet with them. You know, Brian and Tank did a great one this weekend, the Biker Lifestyle Podcast, where they were talking about these things and talking about the type of people that are now in this lifestyle. And what we find is a lot of these people. They're dreamers. That's all they are. They're dreamers. And they come to these type of platforms to get their ego put out. They feel like they got to say. But when some of these people then take what other these other idiots have to say and then go out on the street, they wonder why they get black eyes. They wonder why they get their ass stomped. Because they have no comprehension of what they're getting into. And sadly, the ones that do have some sense of what they're getting into, they refuse to be a man. They refuse to take what's coming to them because they don't want to do the time. I was once asked by a real awesome guy about why I'm so hardcore on the ranting, why I'm so hardcore when it comes with dislike of cops. It was not only the way I was raised and what I believed in, but get a little personal here. My kid went into the joint at 17 years old, 18, something like that. He is now 24 years old. And everybody knows, because trust me, I get the emails about it. He went down for murder one. Took 30 years. He was the only one that didn't rat on the others. The others, man, they were like, the cops are like Pied Pipers. As soon as they start coming, everybody's jumping ship. Well, he hung tough. He says, you know what? Screw your deal. I'll go to trial. He ended up getting 30 years, not opening his mouth. And that was a kid that did this. So when you have grown men out there spilling their guts like a bunch of punks that they are, yeah, it kind of gets to you if you're in that type of situation where you know a kid can keep their mouth shut no matter what they're facing. But a grown-ass man who claimed to be one of the baddest, toughest dudes, they sit there and break down and cry. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about at 8 o'clock uh, on uh, YouTube. And it's Central Standard in the morning. Yes, we're having our regular show. About the Hells Angels burial ground. And what that is, was in 1972, Whispering Bill was what he went by. He had throat cancer, was terminal, all the nine yards, okay? I guess he grew a conscience. He cut a deal with federal and state to get his uh, charges dropped so he could get out of the joint. And he led them to all the, you know, the burials of a couple people. Uh, you know, a party went, uh, you know, sideways. 
LSD, all that stuff, man. I talk about it tomorrow, sex, drugs, rock and roll, the whole nine yards back then. So he initiated it, and he was one of the guys who were involved that actually killed the people. But because he wanted to walk free, because he was dying, he thought it was our right to go and rat. What happened to take that kind of stuff to your grave? It just shows you the difference in people now. The difference in generations. That should be what everybody's being taught right now. Not this, how do I become a member of a murder cycle club? Or how should I do this? How could I shake somebody's hand? No, man, you got to be a man before you even get into that kind of stuff. And you got to be a man to get out of your chair and go talk to the club first. Brian and Tank said it perfect in that, man, in their video. Things had really got messed up. And like they said, you have a dude out here, you know what, I'm not, because YouTube will freaking knock us for it that talks about protocol and all this stuff. 1% this, 1% that. Dude's club started out with cops. CEOs. All kinds of crap. Now, granted, it's a different set. They might do stuff different like that, but in the white set, you start that kind of crap up with cops supporting cop causes, saying an open zoning meanings, that yes, we'll call the cops if anything goes down. Yeah, we would equate that to like, say, iron order. But people are too ignorant. They don't understand that kind of stuff. That hey, if your history, your clubs, a damn cop started it. Well, guess what? You're never going to get rid of that. There's even a big one percenter club, <laughs> I won't name names, said at least we know who our cops are. You're shitting me, right? You're crazy. That's not what all this is supposed to be about. There's supposed to be a line. You never cross the line. Cops there, us here. But now that line is gone. They wiped it all away and they claim that it's evolution is the reason why the line's gone. Well, you go and tell the people that stood high, stood proud, doing a time for their club, most doing life sentences, that it's evolution. That's why it's all right to do this kind of stuff. Tell them. The ones sitting behind a 6x6 six six bar right now. That only get it out an hour a day. And what they did for their club. Was the past. That was long ago. We don't do it that way anymore. I call crap man. I call that weakness. And I call that crap. Because you're dishonoring everybody. That put in work for their club by saying that. By saying it's okay to have law enforcement in your club. I don't know how you guys do that, by the way. I guarantee you, I'll bet my life on it. If something went down, that so-called brother cop of yours is going to turn on you in a heartbeat. But you're ignorant. You think it's cool. It is not cool to support that stuff. If you truly believe in this lifestyle, you live it every single day. If you believe that's all right, you're a moron. I get it. You got the people that live it every day. You got the rubs. You got cops. Pick what you're going to do instead of going to a stupid YouTube channel like this or any of the other ones and asking for advice. 
because it's usually going to be people like that that are going to start there and talk. The ones who run and get the... This is entertainment. Wake up. This is entertainment. This has nothing to do with how one club does something or another or how protocol this is or protocol that is. It's entertainment, folks. It gives you a time where you can get away with from beating your pecker in a corner. That's what this is. It's not to be construed with actual advice. You can't learn that here. I don't know who the hell's telling you that, but you can't learn it. You got to go out and do it for yourself. And if you're a so-called man, it ain't hard to go and shake a hand. So why do I have this as a topic today? Because it does seem like there's rats everywhere. And that right there is even blurring the line. Because people think it's all right for somebody to open their mouth. It is not all right. You got to actually stand for something as a man. I ain't talking about an MC. I'm talking about a, a man. Do you really think that if you got involved in something, you knew the consequences... Do you think it's actually right to go out there and talk to the cops to get out of what you knew you were getting into? You're not only a disgraceful human being, but you're one of the biggest hypocrites on the face of the earth. And you're also the reason why men ain't men anymore. Used to be a time where men wanted to be a man. They had their word. They had their balls. And most importantly, they had their freaking word of honor, man. You know, I always find it funny when you see people putting this uh, honor and loyalty or lots of love and respect, all that shit. Half these people don't even know what it is. They don't know what any of that is. They can say they do, but they'll never stand behind that when it gets tough. A lot of people say they will, but they won't. They won't ever stand behind it because it's a cool trend, okay? That's all it is, is a trend to them. It's a part of their, you know, midlife crisis, if you will. That's all it is. But the sum, it's everything. And I always say, I kind of blame my generation for not passing down the real knowledge because we tried to cuddle our kids instead of the ass whoopings we used to take. Oh, I don't want to do that to my kid because they might call the cops on me. No. That's why we got what we got going on in this country, because we didn't give an ass whooping to them. Same thing with everything that's going on on the streets. I just think it's a real sad state of affairs, and I personally don't know how they live with themselves. Maybe they should take out a 20 and freaking put it behind their ears, because that's about all they're worth. I always said the lowest you can go is being a child freaking sex offender. But I'd have to put ratting on people right next to it. That's how bad it really is. So you have this scenario where you're getting busted. I don't know. You got to bust it with a freaking gun you're not supposed to have, whatever. 
And next thing you know, you turn around and say, you know what? I got information and it's only what a five year stint for an illegal gun. And they decide to say, you know what? I got information on, you know, this club I'm in, this person's doing that. This person's doing that. You're sitting there telling on people and you sat at their table with their kids and ate. Their kids were probably calling you uncle. But because you're too much of a punk who couldn't take a five-year hit, you turn them in? You see where I'm going at this? How the hell do you even live with yourself doing that? You sat at their table with their kids and decided... Oh, I can't do this time, even though you accepted it when you got involved. You said you were the badass. You said you were the gangster and that I'll be able to do this. But a five-year hit comes at you, which you'd probably get down to two and a half, you fold. That's right? No. No. That's just like that Bandito case down in Texas, Pike and Portillo. The National Sergeant at Arms, he knew what the hell he was doing. So did Johnny Romo, or Homo as I call it. They all knew. They accepted it. They got to live with the reputation that their positions held. They got all the broads. They got all the pink taco. They got all the tits. But when the piper came calling, they folded like a bunch of dominoes. But wait a second here, man. I thought you were Big Billy Badass or some shit like that. Wait a second, you folded. You put the blame on the National P and the VP. Here you are supposed to be a national sergeant at arms. Why? Because it was in your best interest and you even gave an interview to the newspaper saying, yeah, you know, I'm going to be in fear the rest of my life. I'm a rat. I'm this. I'm that. Give me a break, man. Again, take a 22 behind your ears. That's what you deserve because you're a coward anyway. And I guarantee you sat at that man's table, broke bread with him, ate with him, went to his kids' parties, went to the kids' graduation, all that stuff. But you decided that you couldn't take the responsibility for what you got into. But you wanted to live with the reputation now, didn't you? You're a fake human being. You're a fake man. I don't, you know what, what do they do? Cut your balls off as soon as you went into the interview room? It's real easy to say three things. That's it. So there's that kind of rat. Then there's the kind of rats that were are within the organization so they can try to get freaking status. They'll turn on everybody in a heartbeat. Those are the guys you really got to watch out for. The ones that talk behind your back? Yeah, they're the first one that's going to flip, baby. First one that's going to happen. As soon as you get up in there, you're going to see all the video tapes, and yeah, he did it, he did it. What kind of deal can I get made? Now, I am kind of sad that in the prison system, it used to be they were strung up and stuff, but even it's changed in there, man. I hear from my kid all the time how it's changed. <laughs> Trust me. It is like, damn, are you serious, man? You got pedophiles walking all over the place and nobody's doing nothing? Yeah, that's how it is now. Damn, man. <laughs> I was finally able to have a good conversation with him because he did a long stretch in the freaking hole and shit like that, the crazy kid. But it, it just, this is a topic that 
I believe is real important because it's not like it used to be where you to trust those who say were brothers or associates. It's not like that anymore. It's like you got to play the game just to find out who's on your side or not, even if they're the same people as you. And then when you hear these people, and Brian and Tank were dead on. When you hear these people on these YouTube channels, which again, were entertainment folks, shouldn't be taking me serious at all. I'm a schluck sometimes. Hell, I can't even speak the English language half the time. So you can't be taking me all serious. But the stuff that they're putting out is not reality. You know what, Brian Tank, if you're listening, boy, did you nail that one. Did you nail that one? Especially from people that started out of cop clubs. Come on. I always said you will never, ever, and that's finish that thought. I'll forget it knowing me. See a true one percenter on here giving advice. You're not going to see it because they're not going to do it. But you'll see people feeding into this stuff and it was a good rant on brian and tank's freaking podcast it's the biker lifestyle podcast it's on here in youtube you can check it out love the episode i actually pinned it in our community comments as well they're in an actual club one that is recognized a lot of these guys on this youtube stuff what they failed to tell you is they're not universally accepted. They're only accepted in maybe uh, one set or another. They're not universal. Meaning, they don't get respect. They're especially cops. Come on, guys. Everything that we're supposedly against. Again, I encourage you guys to go over there. Let me go into the chat real quick. Uh, let's see here. Grave Wolf. Back in the day, club brothers would take a bullet for each other. Sadly, these uh, days, people will sell you out over anything worse than a parking ticket. Woo! <laughs> you know what? You are on the dot right there, uh, Grey Wolf. You got that straight up, man. Uh, they used to bleed with each other, cry together. And when you see some of these creators, it's like, dude, I know already. I know if the feds came knocking at the door that I'd be looking at 25 to life because your ass is going to flip. It's just straight up. You can tell that kind of stuff. You can tell by the Body motion, everything. Let's see what Charles has to say here. If you know what you're getting into, take it and move on. You're damn right. See, that's one thing I never understood. If you know the game, why rat on somebody? I think it just mind boggles me. I really do. I think it, it screws my head up. When I see some of these stories that I cover, and one thing's always in common. They're all ratting on each other. Whoa, hey, wait a second here. What's up here? What happened? First thing that comes to my mind. And I'm sure it does you guys. My God. Let's see here. J-Man, I appreciate that $5 donation, uh, buddy. If you do the crime, you better be ready to do the time. And that has been lost. Now, it, that's just a saying because a lot of people won't do the time. They'd rather push it, they'd rather push it on somebody who did nothing. They'll make it crap up. When they get into these informants, these witness protection, you got, come on, anybody believe the government? You got, you know, damn well they're in there 
pushing these people to say stuff. They're pushing these people to actually entangle people. So, yeah. It's supposed to be if you do the crime, you better do the time. But it ain't like that no damn more, man. And I don't get it. Let's see. Uh, Bangkok Connection. Bangkok. You know what? They're, you know what? I'm not going to get into that because I had a thing. Uh, you know, and you knock somebody in the nuts, uh, ask them what the capital of Thailand is, whatever. Uh, mafia, bike club, street gangs all turn on their own to save their own butt. You know what? Sadly, some do. Now, not all. You know, I'm not talking about everyone, man. There's some hardcore stand-up people out there. I'm talking about in the realm of how I do the history stuff, the cases I look at. Uh, tomorrow, you'll see it. Again, the Hells Angels burial ground. The cops would have never found out about any of that stuff. If it wasn't for this guy who, one, committed one of them, and two, had throat cancer and wanted to free his mind. It would have never been found. And then he wouldn't have had somebody else who owned the property turn because the cops would have never known. But because he wanted to free his mind, everybody got hemmed up in the deal. That's the kind of people I'm talking about. Not everybody is a rat and one thing if you're going to use that term see i'm one of the guys that take it very serious have paperwork to back that stuff up man because when you're going around claiming this one's a rat or that one's a rat okay where's the proof and if you don't have the proof you're the damn rat because you're the one out there pointing all the damn fingers donna have been uh, watching Brian and Tank since their first episode and love their stuff. They're awesome, man. I love that one. I, I love that. I'd have to say that's my favorite podcast because I don't listen to a lot of people on YouTube, uh, but they're my favorites. I have to say that. I, I look forward to each one of their releases because not only do I know them, but I know who they're with. It's a very well-respected uh, club, and they're just straight shooting in the language that I know. See, I don't know a lot of the languages nowadays. I don't know it, but I do know the way they talk. I know they're free willing. I know that they say what they mean, something that you won't see with a lot of people nowadays. So I really... I guess, relate to them more than I would any of these other YouTube channels. That's just the way I am. Uh, that's why you can't take it serious at all, Source One News. You can't take a lot of the stuff you see on this internet serious. And I think that's uh, one of the reasons why today's Real Talk is about all this stuff. Maybe, hopefully, informing people... That, hey, if I got to say it every week until it gets in people's heads, it's entertainment only, then maybe they'll learn. Maybe they'll learn that somebody like me is not to be taken seriously. The other ones ain't supposed to. Come on, if you ever listen to my show with China Dow on the radio, which, by the way, is InsaneVoltageRadio.com or the Discord server, you'll know that you don't want to take me serious the way that show goes. Yeah, I do you know, blend in stuff that is serious and non-serious, but at the same time, I'd be the first one to tell you if I'm talking about some kind of freaking subject that has to do with you being on the street, don't listen to me. Go to the club. That's that's for them to tell you, not me. I'm not interested in making money off of something that I'm going to get somebody screwed up over. That are going to get a bunch of dotted eyes. I'm not into that. Because I do know, even though things have changed, 
there still are some serious individuals out there that will screw you up if you take some of this advice that you hear from us on the internet out to them. Todd, uh, Leo plan informants everywhere. You can't trust people. They sell you out all the time. And how do you think that these cops actually make RICO cases and everything else? Informants, they flip them. It's just like dealing dope. They'll expect you to give up three for your one. That's his, That's here it is in Chicago anyway. So you got to rat out three people to get out of your one. They flip you to an informant. And next thing you know, you're out there and flipping other people. It's a vicious cycle, man. Vicious. Cops equal completely overwhelmed public servants. I don't know about that. They bring what they want. Uh, if you don't, if people don't think they're rats in here trolling your, you know what? You got that right, Todd. You know what? I get so much hate mail from cops. It's unreal, man. They don't even try hiding it because they can't stand me in the way I think. So. You're damn right they're in here. They're in every channel. They're on everybody's social media. That's why I bitch and moan and say, you know what? Why are you posting shit about your club or organization? Because you're not even making them go work for it anymore. It used to be in the old days, they had to get off their ass, go to an event, take your license plate number to identify you. Now all they have to do is sit back with their donuts their coffee for an eight hour shift on the internet and between looking at some freaking dude sucking on a horse cock, which, you know, most cops like, you nasty asses, they're looking at Facebook, they're looking at YouTube, they're looking at Instagram, they're identifying everybody and they let it happen. That's write it on yourself. And then they call it evolution when they say, you know what, that it's not the way it is anymore. Yeah, until your ass lands up in a situation. My boy, Iron Horse, there are, and they are just looking for information, in my man, seeing who's who and who's doing uh, what any little intel they can get. They love it. You're damn right they do, because who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to be able to just sit there on a damn computer and write down who's who? It's easy. So it's a little messed up, in my opinion, but that's the way it is. Mike says, when they arrested militia members for planning of the kidnapping of Marcus, uh, Marcus uh, Governor uh, Her. There were more FBI informants than militia members. You got that right. And like China Dow just said, don't forget TikTok. I never thought I'd see that. But with militias, I don't even go near, man. Because I know the, they're full of FBI. They're full of them. And that's sad because that's supposed to be a defense mechanism against the government. But hey. That's how they run their stuff. But a lot of times you'll see that. A lot of informants, a lot of FBI agents in that. Workplace rats are bad too. My job ruined by a few of them, Commander Bell. It, it's all over the spectrum. Not only in clubs, not only in gangs, not only in the syndicate, but in workplace environments too. Because they were raised that it's all right to do this stuff. It's already out there. It's okay to them. So it's never going to stop. It's just going to get worse because they're going to pass it on to their kids and they're going to come back and tell you and me that it's evolution. <laughs> That's what they're going to tell us. Uh, Brian actually uses F uh, almost as much as you did when you first started out. Well, that's the thing. I, I, that's why I love the show. They speak 
the right language to me. A lot of other people, that's just like my radio show with China Dow. I don't know how many times I'm called a racist. I don't know how many times I'm called a chauvinistic pig. I don't know how many times I'm called, a, you know, all kinds of names in a book. It's because them people can't relate to what I came up in. Even these idiots on this YouTube stuff, they can't relate because they weren't even born yet. So how the hell are they going to know any different? I blame that on our generation. That's all. Todd, nope, they infiltrated before those militias even start. You're damn right they do. And that's just like uh, the wh white supremacist groups. They do that too. It's not like the old days where everything was hush-hush, but that's because it was a different generation. You looking at the World War II generation, now them saw hardcore boys. Hardcore, man. They never, you know what, They those were men's men back then. The other day when I was handling this money issue with the guy at the hotel, I had like four or five people stop and video it. And saying the cops are being called, blah, blah. And you're wondering why clubs can't go after these pop-up clubs. Because everybody has a video camera. You're not getting away with it. You're right there on video. And these people don't care what the hell you're wearing on your back. They'll video it. Next thing you know, they're on the stand against you. So why do you think they can't handle it? Why would you put some members freaking freedom involved in a potential rat situation because some idiot just put on a patch? It ain't going to last anyway. So why do you care? I never understood that, man. I really didn't. Uh, let's take a couple more here. They lied in my case and they lie about us pagans all the time. That's uh, Big Jerks 201. Uh, rock on. I love Remain Prod uh, Productions, man. He's a cool one. Uh, <laughs> he is. He's always funny. He makes me laugh in the comments. I need to learn how to be a biker. Let me uh, get my YouTube one percenter patch. <laughs> You know what, Productions, most of the time, that's what you have to think. <laughs> that was the funniest thing I heard all night, man. That was funny shit right there. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, uh, He also says this generation can't even keep their own secrets. <laughs> Kids are taught in school today to tell on everyone. This is true. Donna, you work with them, so you know that's probably the policy. Hell, you got Facebook coming out now saying, report anybody you think that's a white supremacist. The government was telling you to write on everybody if they weren't doing the COVID things right. Yeah, sad state of affairs, man. Uh, Majoice King, I'm always being accused of a cop. Idiots step off, y'all chuckling. You have no idea what you're talking about. Grow up, Mr. King. I'm lost. I'm lost. I don't know what's going on right there. You're not You're not that bad looking either, man. Uh, <laughs> Hollywood hitting on you. Uh, Mike, uh, leaders of uh, Oath Keepers, Stuart Rhodes. Uh, he, yeah, I heard he was an informant. Uh, yeah, I heard about that. And that's what I don't get. People that if they know a history is something and if it was cop related or somebody was supporting cop ordeals, man, why would you even want to get involved with somebody like that? Their most of their history was dealing with cops. So it, it it's just mind boggling. It really is. It, it's mind boggling. All right, man, I'll take a couple more, guys, and then I'll let you go out there and blow off some fireworks, man, because I know they're going off all over today. Our country, yes. Let's see here. Harm, team harm, my man. 
more people need to be like Ro uh, Roger Waters and tell Mark Zuckerberg to, you got that right, man. No crap, you got that right. Uh, it's just insane, man. And now they got to do it. It's like these people, you can always see them on the internet. They don't like something you say. They report you like a B, you know, biatch. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, you guys have a happy 4th of July. Thanks for tuning in to the 4th of July special. All the donations that you gave, that was cool and stuff like that. That helps keep the show going. Uh, you can give on Cash App at Dollar Sign Motorcycle Madhouse. PayPal is in there. Don't forget 815 8, Central Standard Time, the show over on InsaneVoltageRadio.com, as well as over on YouTube. I'll check you guys later. Have a good one, and be careful. Don't go blowing your hands off or any of that stuff. Talk to you. Rock on.